Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Akam SOS, the show that discusses Islamic duties and practices. MashaAllah, during this festive season of Ramadan, we have decided to have a live show every day and dedicate the topics towards Islamic fiqh in regards to Ramadan and fasting. Um, if you have a question that you'd like to ask in regards to Ramadan, um, you can send it via WhatsApp, you can send it via the email, or alternatively, there's a phone number right there, which you should be over there in that corner. I think, no, that corner. Inshallah, you could um, call us and we'll be more than happy to discuss your question. Uh, we, meaning myself, uh, Mohsin Shah, and also Sheikh Ali Ma'ar. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh Ma'ar. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. How are you doing this evening? Alhamdulillah, all fine. Alhamdulillah. Inshallah, inshallah. May Allah accept all your deeds and your fast, inshallah. inshallah. I know it's, it's, a, it's a nice hot day today, but all of us are stuck in and then we're fasting. But inshallah. We use this time effectively. Sheikhla, we've had a lot of discussions in regards to uh, fasting. We looked at invalidators, we looked at traveling and so forth. We even looked at, um, you know, uh, being in Junoob. So a question that I'd like to start off with is that if one stays at someone's house overnight and, you know, he becomes Junoob, he, he goes to sleep and he wakes up for Suhoor and now he's, he's you know, in, he's not Tahir, he's Junoob. But he's shy to ask for a shower. You know, you're in a guest house. Sometimes it's, it's difficult to say that, look, can I have a shower? I need to do ghusl and stuff. It can be embarrassing. What if this person wants to do tayammum instead? And, you know, he fasted for the day. Is his fast valid? A'udhu billah as al alim min ash-shaytan al-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi al-tayibin al-tahirin wa la'natullahi ala a'da'ihim ajma'in um, His fast, of course, would be valid with the condition of the fact that um, if he wants to do the ghusl, it's going to be very critical uh, It's too difficult, embarrassing as you mentioned You know, let's say uh, he's been given a place to sleep downstairs and uh, the host, he's sleeping upstairs with his wife and children. There are girls, there are boys. Uh, and the, let's say the bathroom is next to their, the, the spouse's bedroom, for example. They can hear everything, you know, the shower and noise and so forth. Uh, if it's uh, too uh, critical in this situation, he's allowed to do tayammum, of course. But of course, afterwards, he needs to wash for the, the salah coming. Such as Sat al for example. I see, I see. Ah, I said. Interesting, interesting. Sheikh, if a doctor advises that the patient should not fast, can we take his word for it? And, I mean, what does uh, Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Rouhani have to say about this? Yes, his eminence mentions that uh, if the word of the doctor was on the expected harm, uh, that there's a possible harm to uh, affect this individual who is ill and he wants to fast and it will affect his health, then it becomes mandatory on this patient not to fast and to mm -hmm. break his fast. So vice versa, the, the initial hukum, the first hukum is wajib to fast on every individual, individual who is adolescent and adult and, and, and balagh. But when it comes to the fact that if he is ill and he wants to fast, it becomes mandatory not to fast. It's vice versa. Um, and of course, if the doctor um, was an expert in this field and he, he's not, he wasn't giving, for example, the uh, the wrong decision or advice, then we, I mean, they can actually uh, take his word. That's fine. Ascent, ascent. Shana, we've got um, an email come in. And it is, Assalamu alaikum. Um, thank you so much, Sheikh. A wonderful show as always. Um, I am Umm Khalid of Ayatollah Sayyid Sistani, and I'd like to ask if the fasting person was in a city and when Maghrib approached, he broke his fast, then on the same day he traveled to another city while the sun was not set yet. Is it mandatory upon him to refrain from eating and drinking? Uh, so this is a person that follows Ayatollah Sistani. They're asking that. You know, I, I I was in one city um, and Maghrib came and I broke my fast and, and so forth. And then later on, on the same day, I traveled to another city while the sun was not set yet. Is it mandatory upon me from eating and drinking? Well, he would mention, Hafizahullah, that it is not mandatory uh, for this individual 
to refrain from eating and drinking because he already had a full day of fast and the place he were before he broke his fast in the Maghrib time, Shari time and that's it. He did his duty of fasting that day of the month of Ramadan. But he would mention that as a mustahab precaution, uh, not wajib, not compulsory, not obligatory, but mustahab to actually refrain from uh, uh, the eat, eating and drinking. But in other words, uh, the actual hukum is that uh, he, doesn't, he doesn't need to uh, refrain. Okay. I see, I see, excellent. Shaykh, what about you know, the mustahab fast that we have? So let's say that you know uh, when one person agrees with another person, for example, his wife, that you know we're gonna you know do a recommended fast, but during the day you know every one of them gets invited to go out to eat or drink and and, and so forth. Um, you know, does the reward of fasting include them both? Um, what does Ayatollah say, Sistani? You have to ask about that. Um, he would m- say that the inclusion of reward of fasting uh, for the case mentioned is not proven to be right. So uh, it doesn't seem that he accepts this opinion. Uh, okay. it's because it seems to be that they've agreed that they're going to break their fasting somehow. Because you're, fa- you're agreeing to fast and then you agree to break your fast. Mm-hmm. So are you going to get the reward? Of course, Allah Rahman Rahmeen, Allah yeah. gives the reward. So we ask Allah always you know, to give us the reward, yes. even exactly. though we try to find exactly. some uh, loopholes, in other words, if that was the right word to use. <laughs> uh, but we try always to yes, gain Allah's indeed. mercy and rahmah and forgiveness you know, at all times. Ahsan, Ahsan. Inshallah, we'll have a, uh, another discussion on mustahab fasts, uh, because there are different rules in, in terms of uh, when the fast is mustahab, uh, when to open and so forth. Shaykhna, is it valid to make a nazar on fasting in travel? Yes, it is allowed for the one to do a nazar uh, while he is in trouble and to fast in there by the nether, nether, of course, the condition of nether. And of course, uh, the way he, he must say the nether in you know, the, the actual words and phrases. Mm. And then it becomes nether and he has to fulfill it, basically. You see. Sheikh, when it comes to fasting in Ramadan, we are aware that there are invalidators, but there are also some things, um, you know, which, you know, are haram, but at the same time may not invalidate the fast. And we, we have these discussions all the time, that even though, uh, you know, it may not break the fast, um, we still should refrain from them. This is a time to train the, the soul and train the nafs. So, when it comes to looking at the opposite gender, especially with the haram look, does that avoid the fast? Well, this individual has committed a sin, uh, although uh, the uh, the reason for fasting, one of them is that we refrain from the sins. Yes. You know, one of the reasons of our fast is to control, self-restrain, self-control, yeah. self-building. So when we end this holy month, we have reduced our acts of sins and wrongdoings and so forth. So such individuals should ask Allah's forgiveness and repent to Allah Azza wa Jal and that he's not going to repeat this act again. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, the fast is valid. I mean, such sins within the fast would not uh, break the fast. They are not part of the Muftalat al-Sawm. But in all of, on overall, um, would he get the same thawab as the one who was pious, pa- pa- uh, observed, observed piety mm-hmm. and pious in all of his yes. fasting? That's the issue. That mm-hmm. might the reward, the reward might be um, reduced. But in yes. overall, the fast is valid and, and sahih. Excellent, excellent. Sheikh, uh, an individual hasn't fasted for many years uh, in his youth due to the corrupt society that he was living in. Does he need to pay a kafara for all those missed years that he's not participated in fasting? If he knew that uh, fasting is wajib on him and not permissible to, to break the fast, uh, in other words, he is titled as negligent or muqassar, not qasr and ignorant, ignorant, it's got a different hukum, but negligent, muqassar, he knew, but he didn't, he was careless in overall. Uh, with these ahkam, then he needs to basically do number one to do the qada for every single day he missed, 
Uh, number two, to pay kafara, kafara, kafara of deliberately eating and drinking, mm -hmm. of break, break the fast, which is uh, to feed 60 feed, paupers yes. or, or mm -hmm. maskeen uh, with 750 grams of uh, rice, Today, flour, yeah. flour Dates, um, raisins, bread, yeah. and so forth. Yeah, And he also needs to pay fidya for each day that he missed uh -huh. um, of the qada, of the past years, of course. Yeah. Because he delayed them for, for a couple of years, so he mm -hmm. needs to pay fidya as well for each day, each day, separate than the than the um, uh, the kafara itself. Interesting, interesting. Sheikhna, is it permissible to immerse one's hair inside the water? Now we've had a discussion in regards to putting your head, immersing one's head fully in water. What about hair? Just the hair? Well, the one is allowed to immerse uh, part of his head let's say half of it inside the water. Let's say you want to wash part of your hair inside the water, that's fine, you can immerse it, but not the entire. What breaks yes. the fast is the entire immerse of the head inside the water. And as I've said, some ulama uh, would not agree with this opinion, and they would say that immersing the head would not break the fast. So again, you have to go back to the marja you follow to see if he allows uh, to immerse your head inside the water, or he wouldn't allow. Shayna, what about like deep sea divers? You know the scuba diving, they have the whole outfits and everything like that. Uh, so a diver submerges into the water while having you know, swimwear covering the body, including the head. Is, does that still suffice as being immersed in water? If the diver was wearing a, a helmet, let's say a glass helmet, so it was like a, a, a big helmet, like the motorcycles they wear, mm -hmm. uh, the, the bike riders, a, a big helmet and covered, uh, yes, then the one can use that type of helmet and it wouldn't invalidate the fast. But just the outfits you mentioned, no, he can't actually uh, immerse his head in this way. Shaykhan, the next question I think is very, very common, uh, maybe an issue that all of us feel uh, and worry us at times as well, is that when we brush our teeth, um, you know, we brush our teeth when we pass, when we wake up, brush our teeth, we rinse our mouth as well. Um, but there's sometimes we have the taste of the tooth, the toothpaste left in our mouth. Um, you know, we can taste it. Sometimes that taste even goes down. Would that render the fast invalid? Well, the, the taste by itself would not invalidate the fast, but they have to make sure that no bits of the paste would go inside the, uh, the throat. So without the bits, that's fine. With the bits is a mushkila, of course. Uh, okay, makes sense, makes sense. Shaykhna, one of the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa one of the healthy practices was hijama. And the Rasulullah would do hijama, at, you know, it's been recommended to do it once a month, um, I believe. So is Ramadan different from that? Uh, are we allowed to perform hijama while fasting in the month of Ramadan? Um, whatever is the cause of bleeding of the body in the month of Ramadan is makruh, is discouraged, this is disliked. It's not haram, but it's, it's not encouraged. Such as the one removes his teeth, for example, one of, one of his tooth, removing the tooth and bleeding teeth, for example. Likewise, these acts are makruh while the one is fasting. So it's better to avoid it and to keep them uh, to be done after the holy month of Ramadan. I see. Uh, can we use sunscreen on the body while fasting, Sheikh? Yes, it's allowed, yes. And what about dyeing your hair with henna while fasting? Is that okay? Same thing is allowed, yes. Okay. Sheikh, I've got a, a message from the WhatsApp to bear with me. And it's my final question for, for today. I have diabetes and weakness in my body and feel very tired when fasting. Is fasting mandatory in the month of Ramadan? If fasting harms this individual, there's a harm on this individual, then he's allowed to break his fast. That's fine. Um, uh, however, he needs to make it up later as qada after the holy month of Ramadan. So any expected harm, they can actually break their fast because they're ill. Uh, if they fast, they would see side effects uh, in the same day or let's say during the night. So any side effects, any harm, any fear would allow the individual to break his fast and make it up later.
Excellent. Shekhna, thank you so much for this evening. Um, it's been one of the best episodes, I'd say. Yeah, the in questions were very, very interesting uh, and very, very relevant as well. Um, thank you and thank you for your research and all the time and effort you put in, uh, even to look at different maraj and what they say. I know it's not easy. Uh, you know, behalf of, uh, of the people, the viewers, brothers and sisters and myself, thank you very much, Shekhna. Um, I'll accept all your, your deeds and also your fasting as well. And to all the viewers, thank you for joining us on Ahkam SOS. Uh, I do understand that it's, a, it's difficult, um, you know, with fasting and also being in quarantine and so forth. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's moments like this and times like this that we need to benefit ourselves uh, in, in order to learn um, you know, Islamic fiqh while we have the free time. And also, what better time to learn than in Ramadan where, you know, the thawab and the ajr will be increased, inshallah. Thank you so much for joining us. Inshallah, we'll be back tomorrow uh, on Imam Hussain TV free at 6.30. Ahkam SOS, inshallah, join us then. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Uh...